Let's talk about some simple hat storage things today. But I want to talk about basically... I should have taken that drink before I press record, right? Let's talk about how you set your hats down when they're dry and when they're wet. Okay. It's the same basic concept, but when they're wet, it's a little bit more intensive. There's a little more care, okay? So, everyday storage, it's not raining out. You bring your hat in from the uh, outdoors, snap down like this, okay? What do you do, okay? The basic premise of it is snap this up, Okay, the idea is to preserve this curviness and to keep it stiff too. You don't want it getting soft, floppy, and you don't want it losing body because then it won't be able to hold that scoop shape anymore where it's just flopped down. Gravity, okay? The stiffness goes away when you leave the hat's brim on the table. It makes this part get floppy and soft. What you need to do is keep it off the table. It's even better if you take the brake out of the brim. Bring it to its natural position, up position, there's no hinge, there's nothing broken there. So this is its natural up position, just like this, okay? When we wear it, we snap it down, well, some of us, you know. But uh, when you're steaming the hat, every time, steam it up. Never steam it flipped down. I've seen a couple of old timers do that, and I don't, I don't agree with it. Um, steam it up, you're always looking to get a good up scoop shape, you know because the, the healthy up means it's going to be a very healthy down, okay? It's very hard to diagnose this and to tell what to do and what's wrong. You bring it up to its natural position, you know it's wrong. Oh, oh, that's dipping up a little too much, okay. It's dipping down a little too much over there. Okay, we want it to be just like that, and then we want it to be even, okay? A lot of times what happens is stuff sags, so you got to push them up like that. Very common, like, you know, Eight out of ten times, that's what I got to do. Just push stuff up because it's sunk because of gravity. You get everything to the flange it was once at, not to this, like, sank down gravity soft thing that it is now. Bring it to where it is and get it all even. That sometimes means a little stiffener. Um, sometimes the hat's got stiffener in it and you could rejuvenate it just from the steam itself. You steam it press it against the table's edge like this and you flatten it out to get a straight brim and it, it stiffens up just from the steam alone. It reconstitutes the stiffener that you broke down just by making so many folds and creases in it. You know what I'm saying? So what you do is it's kind of melting it and then it sort of hardens again. So generally that will work with a new hat or a hat that's got some stiffener still in it, a western, a hard hat. But when a hat's got so soft and it's just got no stiffener left, you have to add some. You have to spray the hairspray or something. And when you do the hairspray, you make sure you don't get it on here. Don't get it on the uh, leather sweatband, cloth sweatband. It's got to be covered. I have other videos telling you how to cover that. A big paper ball inside, ball of tissues, anything. A, a shirt, put it inside, anything. Or a hat jack works too. It covers like 90% of it, and that works as a handle to hold it too. Uh, don't stretch it, but just keep it in there just to cover the leather, okay? You spray it. First, you gotta pat it down with tape, packing tape. Get all the dust off the underside and here to the edge. Spray it with thin coat of ultra cold hairspray. Stiffen it up, okay? Then you can get that brim, you know, healthy again. All right, but we're talking about storage today. The idea is to keep this brim hard and curvy and it's in original shape, okay? You know, I've got you know, little flaws here. It could be a little higher, but it's basically okay. There's no problems. This looks stock. This looks pretty stock. It's a little softened and a little sag there, but not bad, okay? So, the idea is you want it not to be on the tabletop. It's got to be either, this part has to be in the air, floating. There's two ways to do that. Either set it on something, like hang it on a hook, okay? You're touching the leather band, that's about it. The brim is floating in the air, though, okay? Hang it on your banister or something like that. Some kind of fake head, a styrofoam head. Anything that looks like a banister, a head, a bedpost. As long as it's not hitting the wall and doing this, 
and that'll mess it up. Continuous motion doing that, even for like an hour or something, it could screw it up. So just have the brim floating free in the air. The two ways to do it is either to hang it, like on a hook, a nail is fine, anything, or something like this, you know, like a, a post, the top of something, so that the brim is floating free. The second way to do it is to invert it, just upside down. Put it on your table upside down. That's how I do it. I keep them in my closet like this. Sometimes I'll even stack two or three, but I put hat rings or plastic in between. If I don't have boxes, I keep them upside down, okay? Upside down is real good. I think it's better than hanging it, because hanging, you tend to grab it in the same place to take it off, and that repetitive grabbing for years and years, many times a day, times a week, months, years, decades of that, you're gonna start wearing a big old hole through this. And I've seen it. Every single felt hat pretty much wears out two ways. Either with the hole in the front from grabbing it too many times, it gets threadbare, and then the hole gets bigger, bigger, bigger. They ask me to patch them and stuff. That's from grabbing it in the same place, essentially from leaving it on the tabletop, okay? Or grabbing it off the, the wall. Sometimes there's one in the back too, because when they hang it, they hang it both ways. So there's a big hole in the front, small one in the back. Okay, don't do this, all right? Grab it by the brim. Now, we all forget. So instead of trying to remember, grab it by the brim, set it this way, always. And what happens is you naturally grab it by the brim. You just do. If you set it this way, you're messing up the brim because there's weight on it. It's gonna get soft eventually and lose its shape, lose its stiffness and snap. And you're messing up the crown because you're gonna be grabbing it in the same exact place thousands upon thousands of times, exact same way with a lot of force. You get to make a hole through there. The two ways hats die is either with the hole here or with sweat. People sweat through the hat, they don't change the band, and then it just keeps going up, up, up into the felt, and that you can't clean. So when the band is all covered with salt and stains, that's telling you, you only have a certain amount of time before that band gets saturated and totally full with whatever it's filling up with, I don't know, salt, water, and um, then it goes beyond that and starts permeating into the felt, and you can't get that out. So prevention is, it. that's it. Changing the band helps, but uh, one of those cap and new pads on the inside is really what's going to do it. You might have one here. Yeah, one of these guys. It's a uh, cotton, black cotton pad. We sell them in JJ's hat uh, accessory section. It's a very strong sticker on the back, extremely strong. So if you put it inside the sweatband of a hat against your forehead, it's never coming off. The only way it'll come off is if you take it off and then you gotta slap another one right in its place. So, I mean, we've been selling them for 20 years. I don't think they're gonna stop making it. So I would stock up on a few anyway, because if you gotta freshen it up, it's good to have another one to put a clean one there. You change them every year or so. They're disposable band, and it's the only thing that keeps sweat from going through and ruining your hat, okay? So, two things that ruin your hat is grabbing it there, making holes in the crown, or sweating through it. The sweat thing you could prevent by putting a cap a new band in there as soon as you start seeing the sweat is gonna go into the felt. If you see sweat stains here, the next step is it's going past, it's gonna make a ring, and that'll show on top too. Um, don't let it get out of control. You know, it comes through the stitches. If you see a stitch, a little tack stitch, with a dark hole, uh, cloud around it, why is there a dark cloud around just the stitch? Well, the stitch is made of cotton. So you see that stitch on the side there? Okay. That stitch is cotton. The rest of the band is something else. It's like French silk or whatever, or polyester. I don't know what your band is made out of, but it's not cotton. So what happens is when you sweat, the sweat goes right, you know, the water part of it goes right through that stitch, the cotton, and soaks right through to the outside of the hat and then makes a little round thing around it. Kind of gross, but uh, these are the things that are telling you, okay, you got to change your band soon. Okay, if it's an always thing, the new band gets messed up, you're going to have to put a pad in there. So what I generally do is I'll change the band, but I'll get a pad in there too. Um, sometimes you got to cut them a little shorter, so it blocks perspiration, but it doesn't make your hat that tight. 
um, but they mat down after a few days and they get skinnier generally. It's only tight for like the first few times you wear it. And then you, you wear it in the heat, you're sweating and it packs down and you're good. Now, uh, back to the storage thing. So when it's dry, sorry about the tangents, it's like, man, a lot of information to get out sometimes. Always store it upside down. Brim is optional. You don't have to snap it, okay? But um, when the hat is wet, there are additional steps, okay? If the hat is wet, you must snap it up to the original position and invert it. You must do this, okay? When the hat is dry, this is not going to hurt it. If you just invert it, you take, you go to get to the bar, you put your hat like this, you're good. If the hat is wet, though, you got to break your brim back to this way because it's going to dry any way you leave it and you want it to dry with a straight brim. There's a teeny tiny amount of work involved. You see what I'm doing? But I know there'll be no surprises tomorrow if I leave this flat on its crown and I straighten the brim right now, okay? If I do it like this, I don't know what it's gonna look like the next day. It might be, you know, just a little more saggy, like this will come down a little more. Um, but that builds up after time. It might be a disaster. It could really be a disaster. But it could be nothing, it could be no big deal. Every hat is a little different. But the way to ensure that there's no surprises, they dry the way you leave them. Flip the brim up, keep it floating in the air, and straighten it. You want there to be a nice curve to it, a nice little scoop, as scoopy as you can get it all the way around. It should be even now. And off the surface of the table. If anything looks really off kilter, just straighten it yourself. It'll save you a whole bunch of steaming stuff later. One trick I do is I use a straight edge a lot. I put it against a, uh, you know, like a tabletop or something. So if there's an edge, I'll put it like, I'll do this kind of thing. I'll just roll it against the edge of the table or a counter. Spin it. Not hard. I don't want to flatten out the brim. I want to keep it curvy like this, but straight. So right before I put that wet hat to bed, I straighten it out and I do this, okay? So the difference are, differences are when a hat is wet, the, the things you must do is flip the brim up, okay? And invert it. When it's dry, inverting it is enough. I suggest flipping the brim too, just to get in that habit, okay? Now, first of all, it could be a little wet. You never know. It could be just moist. It could be like a uh, humidity or perspiration and it'll dry funny you know if it's if it's wet and uh, you know you don't want it to dry like that okay so snap your brim when you're not wearing it okay the other thing is the crown okay if you're the kind of guy you grab your crown like this you take it off whatever when it dries your wet hat will dry like that permanently that's your new permanent shape now it's like blocking a hat uh, same thing so got to take your wet hat open up the creases Put them back to their original stock shapes. They pop back. Just feel for them. They pop, see? Okay, that's the Stetson crease, crease on top and the Stetson pinches. That's what I want. I get the brim back up, right way. Check it, upside down, we're good to go. we we'll push. Okay, so in other words, the difference when they're wet is check the crown, Okay, what I like to do is sometimes open it and then close it again. Get it back to the shape that you like. And then get your brim correct. And then off, off the brim. And you're good. That's it. Go over it again. When the hat is dry, you basically, that's enough. That's enough. When it's wet, you want this brim to dry with a nice scoop, curve, like that, so the brim must be in its up position, and you don't want your crown shape to change, so you make sure that's back to its original stock shape, or the shape that you've got blocked into it at the time, don't let it dry, you know, like in some weird way, that's not your way, like that, you know, because if it dries that way, it's permanently like that, until you steam a new shape into it. So yeah, sometimes I just check like this, you know, whatever's blocked in will pop back if you just open it and just feel for the shapes. It's not bad for the hat, it's fine. And boom, all right. Whether it's wet or dry, keep it away from heat. 
Heat is one of those things that really hurts hats. People don't realize how much it shrinks their hats. People come in with like a stack shopping bag of hats, so I'm sure a lot of you have this problem. They're like, this one's a little small. That one's really small. That one's crazy tight. This one, this one fits. That one fits. This one's again, really tight. So they'll have a whole bunch of different hats with different amounts of tightness because they keep their hats like, you know, hung up somewhere in a hot room every winter, year after year after year. Some are 10, some 15, some 20 years old, but um, they're in a hot environment and the leather dries out because they're not wearing them. When you wear the hats, perspiration, the body, you know, chemistry mixes with the hat a little bit and it keeps the leather conditioned. Um, sweat, uh, just heat, all that stuff from the body, it just has their oils in there or something. It keeps the leather good. When I see a hat that's really shrunken, the leather is like just totally like rippled and buckling and really tight on the guy and it's just almost flaky. I could just tell, you know, he never wears it. And you don't wear this hat, right? I say, yeah, how did you know? That's why it shrunk. It was in the hot, you know, environment. So watch the heat. If you have one of those houses where they, you know, the walls are always hot and it's just like you open the door and you just feel it. It's a really nice, toasty house. You gotta have one room that's like your your clean room. Like this bedroom right here has become my little guitar studio and temporary video studio. I've uh, turned the heat totally off. There's no radiator in here, but all the other rooms have it. And the walls stay hot enough in this one room that it doesn't matter. Um, but there's a lot of valuable instruments, so I don't like to turn it up too hot. But anyway, that's about it, and um, I'll see you guys soon.